This video is brought to you by Trend Micro's Cleaner One Pro. So why the baseline Mac Mini M2? Why does this almost 13 years old designed Apple computer make so much sense casting a shadow on plenty of other computers on the market including Apple's own device roster? Let's see what makes this $600 square special and why you might want to consider it. While at it, I'll show you some accessories you might want to combine with the Mini. So first, let's see what the Mac Mini is up against in order to understand it better. The M2 Air is the only up-to-date real competitor to the Mac Mini, coming in a sleek portable form factor that has been modernized with the newest Apple design trends. The noticeable $600 price difference leaves plenty of room for doubt for those much less prone to carry the computer with them and leaves a critical performance factor that we will talk about in a bit. Next, there are only so many older Macs to discuss here and stack them against the M2 Mini. See, before the M2, there was only the M1. I ran my business for almost a year with a baseline M1 and I know exactly and precisely what to expect from it. With that in mind, although you might be able to shave off some dollars with a first generation M1 Mac Mini, it's not worth it. With the M2, gone are the buggy hiccups of generation 1 and the 18 to 35% increase in performance is worth the potential 50-ish dollars in savings. On the other hand, the PC market is of course vast and there are choices galore. Despite cheaper alternatives, most decent PCs all-rounders, computers that are good for general productivity purposes, are between $350 and $600. No matter which brand or configuration you go for, few things are certain. You will often get a PC at least four times or even five times the size of the Mac Mini configured with entry-level guts. You might be able to get something decent if you go product hunting or building it yourself, but out of the box, choices are very straightforward. No matter the PC configuration and this price range, nothing can come close to the computing power per watt per dollar I came up with this term of the Mac Mini M2. This brings me to performance. The base M2 configuration is very capable. It's great for developers, designers, enthusiast creators, photo editors or even video editors with an asterisk. I'll get to that in a second. For the average person, it will work as fluidly and carefree as an iPad Pro. Apps open fast, moving back and forth between tasks is seamless and there's no visible delay or something that might make you wait. I did spend some time with the M2 to see where it would slow me down and for photo editing and graphic work, I was highly pleased. Stacking photos and working on 8K graphics projects, everything seemed to be as my maxed out M1 Max MacBook Pro. By the way, you should be aware that the baseline 256GB M2 Mac Mini has a slower storage speed than the next tier 512GB model. Two times slower in fact. However, I wouldn't call this a crisis and I'll explain why once we get to expandability. If I were to work on a video project, things would of course slow down. They might even get choppy if I introduce multiple layers and effects, but that can be tackled if I change my workflow and I use optimized media. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that if I'm getting started with YouTube now, I'd be more than happy using the baseline M2 Mini daily. It's all about adapting. And by the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? The most powerful suit of the M2 Mini compared to the baseline M2 Air is active cooling and the overall form factor. That is in fact the important factor that I mentioned earlier when I was stacking it up against the competition. It is much easier for the Mini to stay cool almost indefinitely and introduce little to no throttling because of its internal space and the ability to exhaust heat. If you think about it, compared to the M2 Air, again, you're saving around 600 bucks, which I'll show you where you can spend in a bit, and you're getting a lot more ports. Two Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI, Ethernet, and USB A's, making it plenty universal. This is precisely what makes the Mac Mini Baseline special, something I call expandability. You can connect it to multiple monitors and even hook it up with a dock, as I did in my recent desk setup video, which I'll link at the end. Not to mention external storage, whether in the form of slower storage for backup or primary SSD drive that you can work off of. If I use the Mini as a primary computer, 
that's exactly what I do. I'll get a one or two terabyte SSD and with the iCloud setup that I have, I'll be fine running my business without thinking twice about it. What I would think twice about is how lean and clean the mini stays in terms of optimization. That's why one app I've been using on the Mac mini as I have across all my Macs is Cleaner One Pro by Trend Micro. It's an all-in-one solution that helps you intelligently manage and free up storage space. Even better, it recommends actions you can take to improve performance. I am a fan of the smart scan feature which fully analyzes your Mac and SSD, showing you things like junk or bulky files, duplicates and similar photos, and removes them with just one click. And to help you find apps gone rogue, there's an app manager feature. It assists me in disabling unwanted startup apps and removes unused ones without leaving a trace. Cleaner One Pro also tracks the battery health if you're using a laptop and creates a disk map, showing what takes up most of the space. In an interactive overview, I like to pull up regularly. All in all, Cleaner One Pro lets you stay on top of things. It helps you visualize your storage and painlessly removes unneeded items. That's a recipe for a healthy system. Head to the first link in the description below to get Cleaner One Pro for free. Okay, let's talk about elephants and closets. One inevitable drawback of this computer is obviously that it's fixed in place. It's no laptop, although being plenty portable and easy to carry in a backpack. I've been wondering about a Mac mini docking station EDC for some reason. Never mind. Another drawback is the reduced SSD speed I mentioned a moment ago and that only the M2 Pro upgrade gives you the additional Thunderbolt ports you might require. So let's talk about that 13 years old unibody design. Some find it boring, others see it as a classic and I simply find it charming. It's unpretentious, incredibly compact and matches any decor or setup. It's almost invisible. It's like Winnie the Pooh, a familiar friendly face that looks acceptable anywhere you place it. That's not all however. This M2 mini is the cheapest Mac to complement the iPhone. In other words, entering the Apple ecosystem. You can use iCloud, iMessage, AirDrop, AirPlay, Sidecar, Universal Control and more. You can get a Mac mini M2 and an iPhone SE for less than an entry-level MacBook Air. Now more than ever, the $600 M2 Mac mini provides an experience that would lead you to believe that you're using a higher tier device. With a caveat. The base model M2 Mac mini is like the iPad. Great at doing things one at a time. Where the iPad is predominantly limited by software, the mini is limited by the RAM. This is my only recommendation to think twice about, depending on your use case. If you believe you'll really need it, don't cheap out on getting the 16 gigabyte of RAM model. This will give you a lot more headroom and reduce any multitasking anxiety. I'm actually driving a truck in a European simulator on the Mac mini M2, which is extremely hard because this is very realistic. Are the graphics at max or? I think so, yeah. Oh, we just left Frankfurt. And I'm really impressed at how the Mac Mini handles the graphics of this game. Ah! Okay, guy. This is your first job. This is my first job, deliver milk? Yes. <laughs> nice. All right, so I don't have the power to overtake those guys. This guy almost go. Actually, no, you know what? No slowing. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oh, uh, are we leaking milk right now? All right. So I just lost a job for two thousand euro. Well, this guy could have stopped. He didn't. What is this? I'm not driving in Germany again. At the same time, the $200 upgrade in RAM moves the Mac Mini back to the lineup of all the others and makes it less unique. That's 33% of its own price, making it harder to justify. Now, earlier I mentioned the slower speeds of the 256GB model. Don't worry, it doesn't matter because let's say you're getting the base model and now you have between four to six hundred dollars to upgrade. For the sake of the argument, let's just match it with the base model M2 Air. We have 600 bucks to spend. In that case, if you get an external SSD like a terabyte, you'll be dealing with still fast but even slower speeds than what the internal drive can provide of the M2 Mac Mini. 700 to 1000 megabytes per second, which is plenty good by the way. So yeah, the internal SSD 
is not a concern if you ask me. What is a concern is what you can buy for the rest of the budget, the $600 I mentioned. Let's explore. For between $70 and $90, you'll be able to grab a decent 1TB USB-C storage that you can rely on for all your work. I've been doing this for a long time and in my case I have a 2TB SSD that I've been using non-stop for almost two years now. This SanDisk drive has been used as a primary editing SSD daily and still does to this day although on fewer occasions. If we do a Blackmagic speed test you can see that the numbers I mentioned earlier are perfectly fine even for more demanding workflows. Ironically some of the more complex video edits took place on the M1 base model laptop on this very drive. Next, for 100 bucks, you can get a decent peripherals combo like this Keychron K2 keyboard in combination with my favorite Logitech G305 mouse. The multi-device Bluetooth Keychron works like a tank and if you fancy you can mod it over time and make it sound and feel more like an expensive model keyboard. But the Logitech G305 mouse on the other hand is one of my favorites because of the overall experience. It's portable yet decently large, it uses a AA battery that lasts forever and tracks amazingly. The remaining budget you can spend on a very decent monitor. There are plenty of great 27 inch IPS displays sub $400, some of which I'll link in the description below. If you go a tad higher in the budget, you can think of an all rounder like this 32 inch 4K VA panel that aside from being a great Mac mini companion is also a great standalone smart display that features decent speakers, something that the Mac mini can't really brag about. At $600 or even $500 if we're talking about student discounts, the Mini has very little competition, but only if it stays at its base configuration. It's unpretentious, easy to adapt to, making it so good to recommend. This will be my default answer if someone asks me for an affordable computer. If this Mac mini desk setup caught your eye, check out my full tour here. If you're new to the Mac, be sure to check out my beginner's guide here. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. It's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.